Hello there, welcome to part 3 of the Toulouse campaign for Medieval Kingdoms 1212 AD. Last time our war with France just sort of ended because they got defeated by England effectively. We took the county of Venois on our eastern border and then we quested down into Iberia to participate in the wars between the Christians and the Muslims, hoping to steal some territory and we've already taken Valencia. We rejoined the action back in France, or Toulouse I guess it's now called, France is dead at this point. I am firing the governor of Orléans, why? To unlock another governorship slot. You can only have four governors at a time because Attila hates Attila players. And we're going to need that governor slot in a minute. First, here's some annoying news. The Marinid Sultanate is attacking one of our Spanish allies, the one right next to me. And I'm going to join in on this war. That's the particularly annoying part of the news because these guys are going to prove to be a nuisance. I had seen them before and they were kind of stuck up in the top left, but from now on, they're not going to be up there. In fact, they're going to be bothering us very shortly. Anyway, before that happens, the Valencia situation is that we can move out with our stack, but because the place isn't of our culture or our settlement type, we don't get a garrison, meaning anything can take the settlement. Despite that, I thought, well, I'm going to move out anyway, because not only is defending usually a waste of time and money in total war, in this case, it would be better if we can only hold down one place with our one army to take the place next door. This Mercia place is a port settlement and it's worth more and it's bigger and stuff. So we're just going to take this one instead and see what happens. Worst case scenario, we just have a bit more money than we did before, although it is in a more awkward position. However, there's one thing we can do, and this is where the governorship comes in, and that is to throw a governor at Valencia because having a governor in the territory gives you an extra garrison unit even if you don't have one already. So there we go, now we've got one unit in there, meaning one enemy unit can't take it without a siege, maybe like four units could take it, but this is actually quite a lot better. It means they have to go through a turn of siege before they can do anything, giving me time to react. Anyway, we've got a bit of money coming in now, so I'm going to start recruiting some new units over here at Toulouse. And in particular, we're going to have our backup army here, because the Marinid Sultanate could go up in that direction and attack us. At the start of the next turn, I'm failing another mission for the Pope. They wanted me to kill a guy called Mohammed. They could be more specific, I suppose. Well, we didn't do it, whatever that was, and now the Pope dislikes us enough that we're getting some pretty significant public order debuffs across all of our territory, and that's an issue because our territory was already a little bit rebellious. I was talking to the Papal States here, and noted we have a diplomatic penalty with them due to religious aversion. They don't like our religion. Well, I thought we had the same religion as them, but perhaps we're rivals or something because of that. Not quite sure what's going on, but at least we got some starting off deals with the Papal States, so maybe they're not going to invade us anytime soon. Back to the Mercia thing, I was planning actually to attack this at first, but in the next turn, the balance bar swung really far in our favour. I think that's because the balance bar takes into account the enemy's settlement condition, which goes down every turn, and how many pieces of siege equipment you have, which goes up every turn. So actually we can auto-resolve that, taking most of the losses among our archers, or crossbowmen, and there we go, we've taken the settlement, we move on in, and this is a little bit better than Valencia in theory at least. We still need to spend loads of money to actually make any use of either of these territories, but taking it's the first step. We can also recruit a general here now that it's our territory, and this is a similar thing to the governor idea. By having one general hang around, we can put him in the settlement and then move out, thus forcing enemies to do a turn of siege before they attack, and perhaps that will buy us time to react. In this case though, recruiting this general now was pointless, because not only can I not put him in the town until next turn, it actually attracts some unwanted attention from the Marinids. Over the last two turns, they ran from the top left of Iberia to the bottom right to attack us. And in particular, they're attacking that general I just hired. He's standing outside the walls of the town. We're being siege drawn out. I feel like the AI right now. We're not allowed to retreat because I don't know. And that's that. We're now facing three stacks and a very difficult situation. However, we can actually slightly get away with this, because it turns out that if you start a battle like this, you still get the option to retreat from the field, even though we couldn't do it on the campaign map. So, we just leave the battle as soon as it starts, and this doesn't count as anything disastrous. We quote-unquote lost, but it just causes a retreat back on the campaign map, and this battle is put off, essentially, at least one more turn. At the start of the next turn, we've got one of these 
annoying marriage things. I always hated these. I hate most of the political things in Attila, but these are particularly bad because both options you get are bad. You lose either dominion or control, no matter whether you let people get married or if you force them not to. So we're just losing even more political control, which is always bad. Now, right here, the settlement is under siege, and it's in terrible condition after the auto resolve I just did against it, which means we don't have many defenses, actually, and this three-stack horde might be a bit of an issue for us. I did have an idea, though. I thought since I have this one guy outside the settlement, we can try and do some aggro. If we just move him away, and the enemy commit some of their forces to go chase him, because they have to have their armies stuck together, they're going to send at least a stack to fight my one guy, thus wasting the enemy's time. However, I couldn't get to the place I wanted to go stand, because I had to go through the zone of control of this other town. The only way to do that is to besiege it, retreat, and hope you retreat in the right direction, and it didn't happen. In the end, I just left them under siege to see what would happen, really, and what happened was they attacked me, so I ran away from that situation, and that was all good. So, have I just wasted my own time in reality? Well, not necessarily, because one of the enemy stacks actually did come over to attack my one guy. Now, this isn't a very good fight, but I noted the enemy commander is weak, so I thought maybe we can do some antics here. I figured we can try and assassinate him. The plan was to hide in a forest here. The commander's at the back of their army, so I thought I'll sneak around to the back while they don't know where I am then just suddenly charge in, try to kill the general, and see what happens. The problem was, it turns out their army's wing was right here in front of me in the forest, I just couldn't see it, for the same reason they couldn't see me. So I ended up stuck in this melee with some Javkav. Obviously it's possible that we could break through these guys and go on to still do the mission, but I'm going to spare you the torture of seeing how badly that went and just show you the result. We killed one of the enemy Javkav. I don't know why either our guys are so bad or those Javkav are so good, but we picked up a measly one kill, although the enemy killed 13 of their own people with friendly fire from some other Javkav. So that's something. We've slightly weakened the enemy with the loss of that general. Overall, though, that wasn't a very good trade. Perhaps it did achieve something, though, because the enemy army then walked off somewhere that looks like it's not actually in range of the siege anymore. So maybe we did end up sufficiently distracting them by the end of all that. I tried to get my allies to help out. We can do the war target thing to make the other Christian Spanish factions try to go after this Marinid Sultanate and maybe help me. But as it turns out, they're not going to be doing very much, as you'll see. Bang to quick alliance with Castile there, since they're also sort of on our side. Back at home, I was trying to start a fleet in the Mediterranean this doesn't work. I'm not sure, but maybe the mod takes fleets out, because I haven't seen many other people using fleets. There are lots of ships going around, but they could just be transport ships. So that failed, if anyone wonders why I'm not using fleets or garrisoning places, using admirals and things like that. Anyway, now down at Mercia, we've got a situation because the three stacks do actually come back together for a siege assault at the end of this turn, and that balance bar doesn't look very good, does it? I was actually sort of looking forward to this because I thought let's use a siege defense to channel the enemy into choke points and things and try to make use of the defenses. However, the settlement begins in such terrible condition that actually we don't have much in the way of that. We don't have many towers and the front section of the wall, the north wall, just isn't there. So there's going to be no pre-siege part where the enemy is stuck outside and we can snipe away. They've left all their siege equipment behind, and they're just charging in. We still have some advantages, though. Choke points are still going to be on our side. Like right here, we've got some spear walls defending this plaza. My main act, though, is to defend these little ramps up to the capture points using spear walls and close-range crossbow attacks. Also, because the enemy have three stacks and only two can attack at once, there are fewer enemies than it said on the campaign map at first, and the balance bar isn't actually that bad. Next to the plaza, we've got some crossbows on a barricade. I hoped all these enemy cav would run up to the barricade so we could just shoot them at point-blank range. But it looks like they're off on their own adventure somewhere else, so we'll just leave them to it. Most of the enemy stuff is actually going for this plaza, and that's fine because the spear sergeants have their spear wall or shield wall, whatever it is, ability. The thing that makes them powerful if they stand still, plus they're already good against cav, so those cav will have a real hard time getting through even quite a thin line just because of how this works. They're doing the same thing as you can see on the other side, and those cav units should gradually die. 
Over at the barricade, some infantry come to attack, but I accidentally give a move order while trying to click on them to attack, and that ruins everything now everyone's trying to pathfind off somewhere, so I have to try and put them back on the barricade. Basically, if we can shoot the enemy at point-blank range, that will be excessively powerful. Those cav who run, ran past our barricade earlier end up attacking my knight that I forgot sitting at the back here, so that's annoying, but at least the knights will be able to beat them with help from the nearby infantry. So here back at the barricade, this is where the kills should be coming in. I really hoped this would mow them down, this being a point-blank range volley of crossbow bolts. Unfortunately, it barely does anything. If you do this with, say, javelins, you can kill hundreds of enemies easily just standing there. In this case, though, these crossbows don't prove to be very powerful in this scenario, and indeed the barricade is soon destroyed. I just leg it, and I also have to abandon the other barricade because it's going to be rear-flanked now that that first one has gone down. I moved my knights over near to the plaza, thinking maybe we can attack here, but then I hesitated and actually didn't, realizing there are three units of those Javcav. Even if we can't beat them in melee, as seemed to be the case in the previous battle, if we're just anywhere near them and they throw jabs at us, these knights will just die. So because of that, I can't help out the situation with our little spear wall. I can, though, go after the two units of melee imps that are currently attacking this barricade for no reason. Unfortunately, the pathfinding messed up and I couldn't make the rear attack right away. I had to give some new orders and by the time we're formed up to make this attack, the barricade broke, making my charge a bit less powerful. However, I did already have my other knights on the other side of the barricade, thinking this might happen. So we charge right in and sandwich those two units of melee infantry and they both rout. They are going to go down super fast. That's two enemy units dead, 50 something to go really. All of their units start to properly arrive and most of them go to join that blob over by the plaza. A few are venturing into the town elsewhere, and that's okay, because if it's just one or two units, we can actually do something about it. Here, I was hoping to see my crossbows shooting these enemies down here. You can see how the geography is supposed to work. While the enemy blob is stuck in front of my spears, they'll still be in line of sight of the crossbows, and we can keep shooting them. Got a nice volley on that unit there. Such a nice volley, it actually killed the music for some reason. No idea what's up with the music in this mod. It likes to just go away. Anyway, this one unit of spears is heading over here to capture this gate. I thought I might be able to charge them with my nearby knights, but as I came in, they immediately turned towards me, so I actually backed off. Nice work from the AI there. Maybe that charge would have still worked because they were turning. Anyway, they've also got some units going in around the back of the plaza. I did have that entrance guarded, but I had to move my men away because the men on the other side were under such pressure. Now some enemy cav are in there, but my cav are in there as well, fighting away, so this isn't a disaster, and in fact, it's an opportunity. This unit is, well, it's Muhammad, perhaps this is the guy I was supposed to kill, it's a general on the enemy side, so I'm going to leave my cav there and try to kill him, basically. Looks like we've lost that western gate, not that it particularly matters. A bit later, we've lost one unit of our own cav in this fight with the enemy general, but our knights did kill said general, there we go. While there are multiple generals on the field, I think killing any of them gives all of the armies the general lost debuff, if I remember correctly. At least it seems to work in our favour right here when I attack these nearby spears with my knights, and they are immediately on low morale. These guys did have my troops surrounded who were miraculously on high morale, perhaps because we're on the capture point there. So yes, those knights will be able to clear out the units that are behind my men, getting rid of the rear attack and continuing this big brawl at the plaza where we're holding up like at least two stacks worth of troops in a big queue to get in with just one unit. This is a very effective delaying action, although because we don't have towers and stuff shooting into the enemy blob, this delay doesn't necessarily achieve anything. With the knights, I spotted some skirmishers wandering about elsewhere, so I charged off to attack them. However, once I got there, some enemy cav came over to attack my cav, not so bad, but because we're in Attila, we can't disengage at any point now. As long as there's always something here, we can't safely leave without taking severe losses, so I kind of have to just fight that out, and that's annoying because the Cav could probably do something else better. Looks like we finally lost our spears just due to sheer attrition fighting at the plaza, so that central area of the town will now be lost. Over in this western corner, I was hoping to see my crossbows cutting down these infantry. They are shooting at them, so the plan sort of works here. It's quite important that I don't give any attack orders though, because if the enemy retreat, my guys will then chase them because there's no guard mode in this game, meaning we can't really influence the fight, we have to hope the fire at will just works out. 
With this cav fight that I really wanted to leave, I realised that most of our lighter cav or our medium cav are kind of at the back so it's safer for them to retreat while the knights just tank everything in the front. That way I've got another unit to play with, we can bring them back towards the rear of our lines and try to ride out some other time to get a rear attack or something like that. You can see the main attack on our position is starting now, the enemy's blob has formed up on the ramp and it's time to see if this plan will work. We've already lost a bunch of men due to the enemy throwing jabs at us, their archers can do a number on us as well. Not much we can do about that, I'm really placing my hopes in these crossbows. Here I actually broke my rule by giving an attack order, mainly because they just weren't firing. They do finally shoot a volley into the enemy blob, doesn't do all that much. I did have a lot of hope for these crossbows, because they're even crossbow sergeants, they're not the levied crossbows that I've been using in some of my other forces. However, it's not doing the business particularly fast if it is doing it at all. Still, nothing else we can do, so we just need to pray that the Lord will tell our men to do some stuff, and maybe they will. I'm trying to use attack orders as well, which occasionally makes them shoot off at least one volley reliably. I think what might be happening is crossbows have a way longer reload cycle than their animation accounts for, which might make them appear to always be doing nothing. Or actually they're technically reloading, it just doesn't show that and makes it look like they're glitched out. I suspect they're less glitchy than it seems, they just have a really slow rate of fire. So, overall, not much happening over there. We're being attacked and pressured on all fronts, the crossbows aren't killing enemies, this battle is starting to fall apart. I had this idea, which is maybe I can shoot from this nice position on the slight flank of the enemy blob. Unfortunately, you can't garrison troops into the wall or anything there, so we can't do anything other than get hit by enemy arrows, and actually we're going to rapidly lose most of our crossbows at this point in the fight. This unit of Forgotten Cav gets attacked by enemy lancers. Luckily, they're now in range of this other crossbow unit, so we'll actually be able to win that, probably inflicting some nice friendly fire at the same time. These couple of units coming around to the east side of town, they're not going to be a threat, we can hold them off. A unit tried to start up a new front on the other ramp going up to the capture point, but we can see the effect of the mass buff you get from being in the shield wall formation. Their charge just does nothing when it hits my spearmen, and now those cav will probably die in that melee, so that's good stuff. That attack on the east that I mentioned is not going very well for the enemy because they're just walking up and down in front of my crossbows and have lost a bunch of stuff. My nearby calf will help us finish things off there, but on the topic of finishing off, we're starting to run out of troops. We now have no melee troops defending our main blob, but the enemy quite nicely sent about two thirds of the blob to go around to the other side of town to attack a front that was more heavily defended. Well that's very kind of them, but even if they attack through that initial point with only a few units, we're going to be in trouble because we're defending with some nearly dead crossbows. On the other ramp, the enemy have discovered the weakness of this formation, they're just throwing jabs at my shield wall and they're dying because pretty much everything is weak to jabs in Attila. So that's going to be the end of that group as well, even though it was actually barely attacked in this fight. And as you can see, we now have to try and hold the capture point with some crossbows in melee. That's not going to work very well. I do have my general up here as well, but he can't do that much, especially because once the fight starts, the enemy start raining arrows all over the place. I try to get out of that fight and lose about a third of my men instantly because we're playing Attila and Attila hates everybody, but I can now use my general to do something slightly more productive, attacking enemy skirmishes over here instead of melee troops. That'll probably pick up a few more kills, maybe. At this point in the fight, we're just trying to see if we can take out an enemy unit or two. There was a good opportunity here where I could rear attack these swords. The thing is, if the enemy win, the threshold for how many men you have to kill in a unit for the unit to be killed is lower. So you have to kill like 95% of a unit for it to get deleted on the campaign map. I don't know what the actual numbers are, but it's harder than if the enemy lose. Anyway, we charge in there and take out that one unit, maybe killing it on the campaign map. Everything else needs to just die now. Even if we can't take out enemy units, Killing enemy troops still helps a bit because it will make the enemy be forced to replenish if they want to get their guys back to full strength. In the long term, this strategically might achieve something. In the short term, we are screwed and absolutely everybody in our army is dead, including our king. We killed a couple of thousand enemies, including taking out a few units, so that's something. I was checking out the kills on those crossbows right here and generally being disappointed. Their kill to death ratio was less than one, in that we lost more crossbowmen than they got kills for being there. Overall then, extremely disappointing, expected quite a lot more, I guess I won't try that plan again. 
Now there is some good news coming of all this. We actually killed the enemy Sultan and his heir in this battle, so their family is going to be in trouble. And we did take out some units as I said, and the other ones are trashed, and perhaps that informs their decision to immediately run away. They go back to their territory presumably to replenish, although they also start taking attrition. I'm guessing there's no food there in their territory. Overall then, that's alright, it seems the threat is over. And actually things are even better than that. Once I've hacked through those messages, you can see the amount of attention I pay them. We've got a new king. It's kind of like in Rome too, I discovered this in my previous campaign as the Gete. If you lose your faction leader and you can't have another one, you just kind of get one. So our king's long lost brother shows up and we just suddenly have the same guy again effectively. Not really sure what happened, but politically things are roughly the same as they were before after the loss of our faction leader, which is great. And we actually didn't even lose the territory. And even better than that, the territory is in perfect condition. They kind of reverse sacked it. I think they came in, killed everyone, and then cleaned everything up because now it's actually fully repaired and it was trash before, as we just saw in the battle. So not really sure what's going on, but let's make use of this opportunity. I can start converting it into a fort to give it a garrison and we can make a Christian church to make them like us a bit more. I need to make a general here, because obviously just one of these armies could come down and retake it because there's no garrison. And I almost did. You can see here I came in the menu, was about to select a guy, and then I just didn't. I'm not really sure what the plan was, but I apparently decided to gamble. I thought let's just leave it completely unguarded and try to build things there. What happened? is they sent one guy to come and take it. So yeah, I'm not really sure what the plan was, but the thing I was worried about did happen. Probably I was feeling so confident that the game wouldn't even bother that I was being cheeky and trying to show off, and it didn't work. As for our enemies, they go and besiege Valencia, and there at least we have one guy inside to defend it, but still, against enemy units, having one unit probably won't help out all that much. At least we have now got a new army back in Toulouse, it's just about done. This army is worse than the previous army we had, but that means we're making some money right now. Also, I have been upgrading the various economic buildings of our territories to get more money through that as well. We're rich enough, I can even start doing things like these big city upgrades, which make you even richer. So, we've got an army, looks like more money is going to be on the way. We're in a position to bounce back from that big loss and go for Campaign into Iberia Part 2. Maybe it will work if we just try it again edition. And already, things do get off to a good start because our allies, the Aragonese, attack the guys besieging Valencia with basically nothing by the looks of it, and the enemy flee. So that's that siege dealt with already. A good start, let's see how it continues in the next part.